10 Caesars, the kings or the emperors of the great Roman emperor. Of course, there were more than 10 Caesars, but I'll talk about that more later. And hello, fellow bookquesters! It is I, Aaron the Bookquester. Today, for the first time in the entire history of Bookquester, I am doing a historical book. That's right, you heard it, the ultimate fantasy reader, Bookquester has decided to read a history book. I know, super shocking. I get it. Stop it, and let's get right on to it. So this book is called Ten Caesars, as I have already said. It talks about all the Roman emperors, from Augustus the founder to Constantine the Christian. And it's by Barry Strauss, who's who I think is a philosopher, no not a philosopher, like a professor in some university. Not too sure about Barry Strauss, whatever name his name is, but he did make Roman history interesting, so big thumbs up to him, thumbs ups to him. And this book, I definitely enjoyed it because these Roman emperors, they were basically bloodthirsty psychos who killed everyone that they disagreed with. I know, typical of emperors and kings, right? I mean, even in Korean history, like in those old countries, it's always conspiracy and that scrabble for power and killing siblings and stuff like that. You know, all that good old stuff. And first of all, I'm going to talk about three emperors today because 10 is just too much. And yeah, first of all, I'm going to talk about Augustus the Founder. And Augustus basically started out being like a child prodigy slash psycho. He killed every rival he had to the throne. And when Julius Caesar, um, he decided to make Augustus his heir because heir because Augustus was cool, he was smart, he was pol he was a politician, he also was a little bit of a general. So Augustus was chosen chosen. And after that all the kings were called Caesars because of the original Julius Caesar, who doesn't count as an emperor but counts as someone who destroyed the Roman Republic, which existed before the age of the emperors. So, yeah, duh. And Augustus is definitely very devious, he's very smart. Historians aren't too sure if he is smart or there's someone behind all his smartness, but we definitely can't say that he's very devious, he's very smart, and he also poisoned, backstabbed, and killed every other rival that he saw as a as a threat to his throne or something. And he made some awesome builds. He was a great builder. And yeah, he was a pretty pretty okay emperor. He's I th I'm pretty sure he was the longest reigning emperor ever reigning for longer than any other emperor to come. And there's the next emperor who is called, who is famous, who is named Nero. <laughs> you all know him, you know, for the great Christian killing and all that horrible stuff. And, but we all know Nero as some kind of psycho warlord guy. He isn't. He's more like a playboy, Tony Stark kind of guy who likes to sing who likes to dance, entertain people, but you know, if you don't laugh and clap to his dances and music and singing, he'll probably get you killed. So Nero was the kind of guy who had ultimate power, but who didn't want to do like politics and all that rubbish. So he just danced around and some fun and sang a lot to the crowd. He was basically a weirdo. And the people didn't like that because they wanted their emperor to be all kingly and be a politician or a great general. So, Nero was a very horrible person. And then uh, people started blaming him for the Great Roman Fire, which basically destroyed most of the city. And this might be true, but it's not a confirmed fact. But knowing Nero is a little bit of a psycho, we probably can say that he burned down the city just to make his palace, so yeah. And lots of people were blaming Nero, but Nero needed someone or a group to blame the whole thing on because he didn't want the blame, right? So what he did was, at that point, Christian the Christian faith wasn't a uh, hundred years old. So basically what he did was he said that the Christians did it. The Christian faith decided to set fire to the city of Rome. 
No idea why, but they did it, so it's totally not my fault. That's what he said. And so, he captured all the Christians around and persecuted them and killed them and executed them in a big spectacle, just how he liked it, in horrible ways. I know, great guy. And finally, there's the perfect king, at least for me, who's named Emperor Hadrian or Caesar Hadrian. Hadrian is a pretty cool guy. He was a general and he came after Trajan. He was a he was very military in person, but he didn't want war. He wanted more like a defensive side, but he still put down all the rebellions and killed everyone with his sword. So I would say he's a general. He's a really good fighter. And he knew that he had to keep the respect and um, he needed these groups to love him. The Senate, the army, and the people. The three groups, the three essential groups that he needed them to love himself. So basically what he did, he was merciful to the poor people and helped the people and made huge bills that impressed and made people love Hadrian. And as for the Senate, he gave them the proper respect. And as for the army, he gave large bonuses. And he even um, lived a hard life as a soldier for a little bit with them just to encourage them. And it basically made everyone love Hadrian because he is a pretty much awesome dude. Of course, he was a little bit of a tyrant when it came to his adversaries or his rivals to the throne. He just, you know, shing. You know what I mean, right? And I, But I still think that he was a really good king. And of course, there's Diocletian, the Great Divider, who's the one who divided the Roman Empire to the two halves. And Diocletian is a, like a Heroes of Olympus reference to me, because that's where I first heard the name. Diocletian's staff was needed to fight the evil army of Tartarus monsters. I mean, monsters that regenerated from tar Tartarus, which which summoned dead Roman legionnaires, which then in turn could be controlled by um, a Roman praetor. And really, it was a good plot, really well entwined with the classic Roman, um, Roman stories, I guess, Roman history, Roman emperor history, whatever. And yeah. Diocletian really popped up to my mind when they said Diocletian the Great Divider because, you know, he came out from the books I loved, from the fantasy books I love. And of course, there's a famous guy, Constantine, and he's basically one of my least favorites because he, he basically changed, uh, changed the entire Roman Emperor to Christian faith. And I don't really care about that. I guess that's good. I'm not too sure. But really, he didn't really do much except do that. I mean, I know that's a really major thing to many, but to me, it's just changing of religion. He basically wielded religion like a playing card, and he basically used it as a weapon to make people believe in him and con control them by saying that it's the will of the Lord or whatever. And to me, it's just that, and it isn't anything good or righteous in Constantine's part. So, yeah, that's what I think. And this book was actually highly enjoyable, to be honest. I mean, of course the Roman Roman, Roman stories, Roman Caesar's stories are basically all about murder and fighting and wars and armies and senate conspiracies and all that good stuff. And yeah, that's really enjoyable. But Barry Strauss definitely had a little bit of a good yarn. He weaved a good yarn. It was really enjoyable, really easy to follow, and I highly recommend it. And like always, your book quester, Aaron the Book Quester. It is an awesome book, and to be honest, let's be honest here, this is a really good book.